Thank you very much, Senator Sunrise. Thank you, Chair. Um, hello, I want to Rose. now move on to the East-West Link. Yes, We've had lots of discussion so far about West Connex. Obviously, we're in a different era with regard to East-West Link than the, the last estimates, with the business case um, having been released by the new Victorian government. Um, so, look, I just wanted to, to start off with, with you know, lots of good information that was the public had made available through the business case. Did the, has, did the department do an assessment of the business case? Senator, the, um, the business case, the, there were a number of business cases yes. that were publicly released. The business case of um, April 2000, sorry, dated March 2013, um, that is the business case that has a BCR of 0.45 excluding wider economic benefits. Yep and 0.84 with wider economic benefits. The department did not do an analysis of that business case and that business case was not supplied to the department. Yes, as we gathered from the... Yeah. The yeah. Um, subsequent business case, which was delivered to the department, I'll just check with Mr Folds, but I think it was 1st of November. It was dated June 2013, but delivered um, in November um, 2013, yeah. That business case um, was assessed by the department. Okay. Can and that has a different um, benefit cost ratio. And Mr. Folds, can that assessment be provided to us? Again, I'll, it, it goes to advice to government, but I'm happy to take that on notice, Sarah. Well, Senator, I think that was publicly released. Given, given the government, given oh, the Victorian government has released sorry. the business case. That's right. Yes, um, that, it, it would it seem is, to be that the assessment of that would. Our, um, our assessment is advice to government, but I'll take that on notice, Senator. Okay. Is there any reason why you think it may not be able to be released? I, I will put that to the minister, Senator. I can't give you a, a position at this stage. That there are conventions around provisions of advice, but I recognise the Senate orders and the like. I'll take that on notice. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, I understand from an answer to a question at last estimates about the memorandum of understanding that was made between the Victorian and the federal governments. Now, was there just one memorandum of understanding or was there more than one relating to the different stages of the East-West Link? There was one mem memorandum of understanding. And that was related to stage two? No, uh, Senator, it covered both stages. Covered one and st well, the eastern section and the western West section. Yes. yes. Both those. Um, stages. Okay, and the answer that was to the question on notice was that it, the release would be a matter for both the federal and the state governments as to whether that could be released. That's correct. Um, what's the view of the federal government about the release of that? Would the federal is the federal government happy for that MOU to be released? Uh, not at this time, Senator. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. happy to go back to the government and seek advice on notice. Okay, so yes, if you could do that then, and, and again, you know, any reasons as to why that wasn't able to be released, given the project is now uh, is in abeyance, would be would be good. Well, we we await Victoria's formal advice on their position on the project. Okay, they about to get to, on about to get onto that. They have so, yet to yeah. advise us <laughs> of their position. Yep, um, I was I was interested in the discussion that came from the New South Wales Auditor General's report about the steering committee that was established between the state and federal governments for West Connex. Was there a similar steering committee at any stage between the Victorian government and the federal that the federal government was represented on? Yes, Senator, there was. There was a steering committee in place um, for the eastern section, the development of the business case proposal, etc., for the eastern section of uh, the East West Link project. And and who was represented on that steering committee? I was represented government? as the federal government representative. And and when did that steering committee commence? And when did it? Has it ceased? Presumably, it ceased operation. It certainly has ceased <laughs> operations, um, Senator. I'll ask my colleague. Mr Folds, if he's got the exact date of when the steering committee commenced, but it had been running for some time. It had been running for some time, and it has not met for quite some months, Senator, and right. does not continue to meet at this point in time. Okay. And similarly, then, as was asked for the West Connect steering committee, would it be possible to get the um, minutes of the meetings of that from that of that steering committee? I'll take that on notice, Senator. Yes. Okay. 
And yes, and well, and well. In fact, even if we aren't to get the, the minutes of the meeting, I'd like to have the yeah the full details of the operation of that steering committee, who was represented on that steering committee. Um, Certainly, Senator. Great. Give up to the hour get the minutes. <laughs> well, I've, I've, <laughs> I've asked for the minutes. They've taken the minutes on notice, <laughs> Senator Cameron. Okay. Well, then moving on. Um, can you? Uh, Given the current situation with the, the new government, the East-West Link, can you update us on what your understanding is, um, particularly with regard to the $3 billion of federal funding on the East-West Link, given the, the Victorian government's publicly um, stated intention of not building the East-West Link? Well, the Victorian government has made its, its public position, um, but they're yet to provide any formal advice to the Australian government on their commitment to the project as required under the MOU. Senator, it's also fair to say that if the project does not proceed, um, then the Australian Government, under the terms of the, both the National Partnership Agreement and the instrument that was signed and the MOU, would be expecting return of the full funds mm -hmm. from Victoria. Has there been discussion with the Victorian Government about the redirection of those funds to other projects? There have been proposals put uh, by the Victorian Government. Uh, about alternative projects that they would like to see funded. Uh, they, that, that is as far as it's gone. Okay. Um, can you give us the details of what, which projects have been put forward by the Victorian Government? Uh, some of them have been publicly canvassed by the Victorian Government in relation to projects such as their rail level crossings, uh, projects such as their alternate proposal for truck access to the port. The Westgate uh, distributor. Yep. That's right. Uh, and a myriad of other small oh. projects through Melbourne. Uh, they, I think, have been publicly canvassed by the Victorian Good. Government. I can take on notice uh, as to uh, that they're, it was provided via correspondence from Victoria. Uh, I can take on notice. Right. So the, the Melbourne Metro um, Rail project, has that been proposed as a project? I'd, I'd have to check the details. I don't recall that being on the uh, initial proposal put to the Australian Government. Right. And um, some of the other ones... Um, the managed motorways project, which was, had been an Infrastructure Australia assessed project. Uh, again, I don't recall I don't that recall being that on being the on list that has been provided right. so far. And, and the, the, the Metropolitan Ring Road upgrade, which again was an IA assessed project. Uh, oh, the again, M80. The M80. Yes, the no, M80 I, I don't right. recall that being on the list submitted by the Victorian Government. Essentially, uh, my understanding is that, and I'll refresh my memory and come back to you on notice, but my recollection is the projects that have been thus far canvassed by the Victorian Government largely relate to their incoming government election commitments. Okay. And has the Department done any consideration or any assessment of these projects that have been um, proposed by the Victorian Government? We have. Um, has it, have, there, have the Department reached any... Um, any views about the appropriateness of redirecting the funding to these projects? Um, we've provided advice to the government uh, based on our initial view. Um, it's fair to say we, we would view some of the projects that put so far forward by Victoria as to be uh, probably projects of lesser priority as we would see them. Uh, they are projects in our view which have lesser value to long-term productivity and... So what, uh, what's that basis been on um, on your... Have you done a, 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 you know, a business case assessment? Or well, has a very, business case assessment been it's provided? It's fair to say it's impossible to do a full assessment based yep. on the information that's been provided so far on most of them. So has, has have business cases for those projects been provided to you? No. no. Oh, so, sorry, Senator, just, just in relation to that, in, in, in relation to the um, Victorian Government <coughs> post-election, we haven't been given new business cases updated with particular lists of level crossings, for example. Yeah. Prior to that, some time ago, there was a list of level crossings that had business cases associated with them that had, in fact, been looked at by um, Infrastructure Australia. Mm. That's some time ago. We haven't looked at that list compared to the latest mm. list either. So but I, I just, mm. just want to say that there probably are some level crossings that are currently proposed to be uh, treated by the current Victorian government that potentially were the subject of an earlier business mm. case. So I'm interested in fleshing that out then. If you haven't received new business cases, what's been your criteria or your process for, for forming a view as to the, um, how appropriate those projects are? Well, I suppose we'd say the, the, the paucity of information thus far makes it difficult to assess the projects as being high value projects. And right, so it's basically an absence of information and we would see there are higher priority 
projects. What, uh, what higher priority projects would you, would you see? Well, we certainly in the past have seen a strong business case for the M80. Mm -hmm. that, that is a project that has been assessed and is uh, generally regarded as a very high value project. And we, we aren't able in a position at the moment to say whether the alternative projects put forward in Victoria have as strong a business case as the project they're not proceeding with.